So the first three cases are pre-utopian themes. Um, so basically anything that came before Thomas More's Utopia. Um, I did this purposefully because I wanted people to understand that although the word utopia was born with Thomas More, the actual concept um, had been something that people had had drived for, for for many centuries before that. So in display case one with the classical age, we see themes of golden age, so Ovid's metamorphoses and the five casts of men, ranging from the caste that's the golden age, all the way down to what would be our current age of iron, which is a very diluted version of the original. Um, and then we also see conceptions of Elysium and Tartarus, which is the equivalent to um, our Christian belief in heaven, of, of in heaven and hell. And then we also have Plato's Republic, um, which is pretty much the first conception of an ideal state and could be uh, in, could arguably the first utopia. In case two, we have Voyage and Discovery, where I tried to document the different journeys that people had taken over the past 2,000 years. Um, this became a very strong theme among many of the later utopias. Um, so the voyage of St. Brendan to the Isles of the Blessed, uh, Prester John's mythical Christian kingdom, where a pope sent a letter to him even though he never existed, um, or Marco Polo's journey to the east. These are all strong themes that would later influence Christopher Columbus's journey to the Americas. In case three, with Paradise Lost and Regained, I tried to capture this dichotomy of heaven and hell, um, which is displayed with uh, a book, the book of Genesis, um, which is a Gustave Doré um, illustration showing Adam and Eve being cast out of paradise. Um, and much of the utopian tradition after then tried to recapture it with these apocalyptic visions of a second coming of Christ and um, a heaven here on earth, which can be seen in um, the New Testament the New Testament we have is the Tyndale Bible, which was published in 1534. Um, that was published illegally, according to the English government, um, and contains these great woodcut illustrations throughout. Um, and at the very end is uh, St. John's Revelations, which um, discusses the, the second coming of Christ and heaven, a heaven being brought down here to earth um, which is encapsulated in the woodcut image on display. So as we move out of these pre-utopian themes, uh, we come to 1516 with Thomas More's Utopia. And in display case four, I tried to capture the different editions that have been published of his Utopia, um, all the way from one of the early ones of 1518 to a modern day Norton edition in 2011. Um, I really wanted to capture with this display case how pervasive Thomas More's Utopia has been, not only as a concept, but also as a work. There are two items of note in this display case. Uh, the first is the 1518 edition, which was one of the first four printed editions of Moore's Utopia. Um, and it contains uh, the alphabet that was constructed by Thomas More to represent the language of the utopians. Um, this was designed in a way to make people believe that these people and their their cultural system existed. The second item of note is the map of Utopia that was built by Abraham Ortelius, who was a map maker in the 16th century. And this map was basically his reading of the book. And he constructed the map based off of all of the locations, the rivers, the mountains, the island, the voyage to the island. Basically, out of, out of the book, he constructed this map. And as far as we know, there is only one in existence, and this is a facsimile of that. In cases five and six, no definitive themes emerged. And so it occurred to me quite quickly that in many ways, writers in the 16th, 17th, and 18th century were exploring the concept of utopia and how that related to the contemporary social conditions. As such, I chose an eclectic mix of items that ranged from Daniel Defoe's Robinson Crusoe, to Francis Bacon's New Atlantis, all the way to early modern conceptions of equality as created by William Godwin. As they explored this concept of utopia and in many ways explored the concept of being in no place or nowhere, 
they came up with these very radical ideas, ideas such as republicanism um, that challenged many of the, the monarchies at the time. And alongside their works came other works that critiqued theirs, and those are also represented in this exhibition. So following the display cases of exploring nowhere, um, in the 19th and 20th centuries, different themes began to emerge, um, such as science and technology, equality and the variants of socialism, as well as dystopic topics such as totalitarianism. In display case seven, um, are the concept is the concept of equality and how that manifested itself in different ways, um, stretching from feminist movements to worker, workers' rights, um, to also conceiving of a socialist state that created a sense of equality for all. Some of the items in this display case stretch from Robert Owen to Karl Marx to Charles Fourier. In case eight, we see the emergence of science and technology, as well as science fiction that begins to sort of push, push us into new realms of ideas that have not yet been conceived. Um, so this idea of creating a society that's completely fictitious. Some of the works in, the dis in this display case that will be familiar to many um, would be Mary Wollstonecraft, Shelley's Frankenstein, as well as H.G. Wells, The Time Machine, and The War of the Worlds. As we move downstairs into display case nine, um, we come to a dark place, which represents very much the dystopic visions that were born out of the late 19th and proliferated throughout the 20th century. Some of the items in the display case will be very familiar to most, such as George Orwell's 1984, um, as well as Huxley's Brave New World and Brave New World Revisited. One of the notable features in this uh, display case is Animal Farm. Um, it's not just an early copy of uh, Animal Farm, it's also a proof copy um, of the original work.